Hello and welcome to the Horror Hour, a place we discuss, we debate, we disagree on all things uh, horror. I'm one of the co-hosts, Yutaka. Hello. And today I'm excited because I'm joined by Sam Zimmerman, the VP of Programming at Shudder. Hello. Hi, that is correct. <laughs> thanks for having me. No, thanks for um, joining. It was a um, pleasure to get to meet you actually in person at Brooklyn Horror Fest, which was a ton of fun. Um so first off, let's talk about, uh, well, I have to just already bring up since it's already hit um, and I was really excited, but Dracula, one of the yes. things that's, you know, coming out for the uh, 61 days uh, Halloween, um, that's exciting. So with that, and actually I think now season one's also on uh, Shutter yes. as well. All, all Dracula, anything Dracula is currently and now finally available on Shutter. We are the hub, the home, uh, and very happy to be the hub, the home of the Boulets. It's really, really exciting. I I couldn't, I'm so happy. Um, so with that, how I'm how excited are you with what we've already seen and what's to come? Um honestly just ecstatic. I mean, and and I'll even just give you this small context, which is, you know, we the first Dragula. Uh, work that came to Shudder was Resurrection, which was a, a two-hour <laughs> special that was made during the pandemic. Um, and then season four last year and now uh, Titans. Um, but we initially had a conversation with the Boulets, uh when season three was about to happen. So okay. there's a few of us at Shudder who, who had loved Dragula and had loved the Boulets' work. Um, and, you know, for probably very boring reasons, season three didn't work out to come to Shudder. So when Resurrection happened and season four happened, and not only that we were able to bring it to Shudder, but the huge, huge response that yeah. the Boulets are, are so deserving of, and mm -hmm. we also knew would happen, um, to be here now, to, to be premiering another season, um, to be post season four, post Resurrection, knowing what's to come, which I of course can't say, but knowing what's to come, um, I, I think not only are we happy, but uh the the team at Shutter who works on the original series and on the original films we're just happy it happened you know there was that moment where we were like oh no we we may not get to do this and now it's here and now it's really full steam ahead that's awesome <laughs> I tried to get a little info but no I <laughs> I understand <laughs> I'm excited for it um the other thing though just with uh you know I guess the advent calendar uh the Halloween, um, just 61 days of Halloween, but just specifically this month alone, yeah. you've had a lot of just huge um, things premiere. Um, one of my favorites I'll actually also ask about as well is VHS 99. Yes. And on the heels of that, you'd already released 85. So before I could even <laughs> catch my breath. Um, so with 99, uh, how excited or not how excited, but 94 was huge. I remember yes. the press release and how well it turned out. So to bring it back for 99, what were you most excited about in terms of just this also new crop of uh, writers and directors into the VHS um, family? Every, uh, really everything, you know, what, what, what I felt the production team and ourselves had established with 94 was the same the same box to play in with VHH, which is kind of go crazy, like <laughs> yeah. really realize your creative ambitions, be freaky, be fun, go nuts, but also tie it to this time period. So you also, it's not unifying in a way that will make everyone do the same thing, mm -hmm. but it is a sense of place. It is a sense of time and it is a way to explore aesthetic and anxiety uh, and pop culture all at once. So when we landed on 99, we were all really excited. What, how is everyone going to play with it? And I think the team of filmmakers who came together all played with it in really interesting and different ways. You know, Maggie with Shredding really came from it from a music point of view and this turnover, right, of attitude, 
<laughs> of what one band was doing in the mid nineties to what this sort of like biting bad attitude kids in the late nineties yes. would take on um, <laughs> and created something really fun and amazing. And then created a band that has like a killer song. Like it's funny, everyone's walking away from VHS 99 wanting the bitch cat song which i love um oh it's already on my phone i i, I exactly. bought that as soon as i saw it was on the um apple store <laughs> <laughs> and then johannes with suicide bid just exploring like that sort of how we were confronting sorority culture and sorority hazing which we're still doing it but that's a specific place at a time especially like the mean girl quality of it um and then flying load i mean that Cousins brought dungeon. back my <laughs> <laughs> that brought back memories all of this entire one really i i mean i grew up in the 90s i i lived that so yes that was oh i man, was that... a legend of the hidden temple <laughs> yes <laughs> maniac and which is like when you think back on it it's really funny because that show had legit jump scares right like the temple guards would like come out and grab you um and with vhs 99 we're building it from the ground up with the entire production team, with David Bruckner, with Radio Silence, with Josh Goldblum. And really it was a team effort in sort of what filmmaking voices we wanted to see tackle this energy and this aesthetic. And with Flying Lotus, we released his first film, Kuso, back in 2017. Mm -hmm. And Flylo and I really connected on taste, on film, I adore Cuso. I think it's one of the boldest films Shudder has ever put out. Um, and we've always tried to figure out what else can we do together. And I know his affinity for the VHS films. So when we were putting this together, I gave him a call and I said, hey, would you, would you ever be into this? Would you ever want to do one of these? And it was like a, a silence. And then it was like in Rolling Thunder with Tommy Lee Jones. Like he went, let me get my notes. Like he just had this ready to go. And it was really exciting. Um, and it was really exciting when we bought Deadstream at South by Southwest because I, I love that film so much. And I love Joseph and Vanessa as really inventive, fun, creative voices. And at the time, you know, they expressed to me, they said, we would love to be a part of a VHS if something can happen in the future. And I was like, the future is now. Like 99 is <laughs> the train's taking off. Let's get you in there. And to Helen back is such a special, incredible twist on the idea of Y2K, a cult around Y2K, going to hell. I mean, it, it was crazy that to me that five movies into a franchise, two filmmakers are like, well, why don't we just send the camera to hell? Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then Tyler with Gawkers, who to me really captured a specific youth energy of 99. Um, and then also like playing with that, a very specific moment in American Pie that we were, we were all like mm -hmm. bombarded by, right? So uh, it's unreal. I think this team really put something very special together. And then 85, I will, I can only tell you that it it is, well, it's going to blow minds. I, as soon as you listed um, the director's list as well, uh, one of the things like, because of 94, I discovered, um, you know, Chloe Okuno, whose watcher is also on Shutter. And, unreal. Oh my God, so good. But, um, you know, I've got my uh, Hail Ratma stitched all back there as well. So, <laughs> When, that was a moment that I was screaming in the theaters when I saw that. But yeah, and then I saw you have Gigi Sal Guerrero, Scott Derrickson, David Brock. I mean, like the list is ridiculous. And um, it's great to see that you guys keep bringing back um, like just incredible talent, but also spotlighting new talent as well. I, I mean, that's the joy of these movies. And I think what the what they can do, should they continue, is be a space where you'll get introduced to some voices that are, are just going to blow your mind and really take you by storm. And you're going to sit up and go, who is this? I can't wait to see everything else they do from here. I mean, Chloe was already like that. I mean, so many people had seen her short film Slut and been oh, such a good one. So taken with it. So we felt really lucky that Chloe came on to VHS 94 and then knocked it out of the park in the way she did. So I think with 85, if, if you haven't watched Imitation Girl, if you haven't watched Lucky, I think Natasha Kermani is really going to blow your mind. Um, Gigi, of course, I think everyone has a sense of what Gigi does and can do. I think she's really going to turn heads <laughs> with how she's kind of subverting that here. Um, working And Mike Nelson, who made the new wrong turn, again, he still feels like a, a, a voice that people are getting to know. And mm -hmm. 
I'm really excited for everyone to understand like what he's come up with for 85, how he's working within it. And then we have the joy of, of folks like David Bruckner and Scott Derrickson who are now on a new level. They're on a different level. I mean, David Bruckner has come so incredibly far from the first VHS, from the signal. Here is now a space where he really gets to play and do something a little like down and dirty. And I think, and I hope Scott Derrickson felt the same way, you know, he's working on this major, major level. He's a major filmmaker. Maybe here he can explore some deeper, darker depths. And we have, you know, we'll roll out the carpet for him to do that, you know? <laughs> I love that. Um, and just speaking of your programming though, what does it take to, uh, I guess, land a film at Shutter? <laughs> um, a lot. There's so many different pathways, you know. Uh, I think maybe the most traditional pathway, or as people might think of it, is uh, it's just when we see the film when it's done mm -hmm. and we acquire it for distribution, whether it's at a festival or a market or is sent our way. And the and I think the unifying aspect, whether we are on a film from the ground up or whether we're acquiring it when it's finished what we hope is sitting with the filmmakers and in just imparting to them that we believe we're the right home and this is why. Um, that to me is what it takes really, because there's a, a million different avenues of distribution in this world. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all the better for it. I think the fact that horror can really dominate our attention at a studio level, wide theatrical release on streaming services, on VOD, um, on, on very sort of, underground indie levels sold at conventions. That's really beautiful. Um, I always say like Shudder can't release everything and I don't want us to because that's to me not in the spirit of the genre. Mm -hmm. When we see a movie we believe we're really the right home for, we have to make that case, you know, and not rest on our laurels, not be um, overconfident and just say like, here's what we think we can do with this movie. Here's why we think we would do that. And here's what we love about it. And the filmmakers that respond to that, we're really thrilled when when they go with us and when they get to come to our platform and we get to release it in whichever way we see fit because we get to be really nimble, we get to re be really playful. Um, you know, when I when I met Joseph and Vanessa and we saw Deadstream, it's such a good film. It's so good, and I knew that that movie is the most ideal. It, it felt so good not only seeing a wonderful movie but also knowing. Here's a movie that if someone ever says to me, it's Friday night, I want to watch a fun, scary movie. This is the new classic for that, right? Like it's mm -hmm. the platonic ideal. Um, so I knew that I already knew then after I'd seen it that the first first week of October, the first Friday night in October, I wanted everyone on Shutter watching Deadstream. Um, and that was really my pitch to them. Like you made the most perfect October movie. Like <laughs> let's put it on in October. Let's let's release it for Halloween, let's introduce it to the world. So it's about us saying, here's why we love this film and here's why we think it's the right home. Uh, trust us. I love that. I mean, you you guys have actually picked up a lot of films that I've seen on the festival circuit. And I was really happy with the, you know, the there's the device of one, Speak No Evil. <laughs> oh. um, yes, really good. Um, I saw Deadstream at Overlook in theaters, yeah. same thing with, um, uh, Sissy is another one you guys yep. also put out. So I really love that. Um, especially I will go back to Deadstream though. That was just great jump scares and just funny. And one of the most clever things I really enjoyed was the fact that we had a found footage with a soundtrack somewhat. Yeah. That was so unique. And it's so, so clever. <laughs> that whole, the whole movie is so inventive. And the other two movies, you meant, the, that's what I think is really special because they're all incredibly different tones oh yeah absolutely um but they're also inventive in how they approach the type of horror they want to evoke and i think that's ultimately what we look for at the end of the day is you know horror is one of the oldest forms of storytelling and we're going to tell a lot of the same types of stories we're going to tell home invasion stories and revenge mm -hmm. stories and haunted house stories what is each individual filmmaker's approach to it and what is their perspective on it and that's what's going to really invite us in and get us excited about it. I mean, speak no evil. What a movie. What a movie. It's so heavy and it's so bleak and it's so wonderful. And I love it. And it's one of our bigger movies of the year. It makes me so happy to say that. It makes me so happy to say that so many Shutter members 
and the shutter members who have come in for Halloween have said yes to that movie because it's gonna it pushes you it it really does um yeah and another thing you've got great documentaries you just wrapped up I think Queer for Fear yeah which made me happy but also you also (laughs) have the 101 scariest moments Mm mm-hmm um so do you have more documentaries in the future planned yes uh it, it's an ongoing conversation there will absolutely be more documentaries um i mean what they are i can't necessarily say but i think we're really thrilled by that's another thing we're always really thrilled by is the response and the interest in going deeper on genre on the films themselves and again that sort of split of tone because I mean both 101 and both and Queer Fear are incredibly fun which is what I love about both of them but Queer Fear is inherently exploratory inherently a dive into learning about the genre and you could say that about 101 but it is a bit poppier in that sense of we're going to count down we're going to say like what we love about the show and and both have been really exciting to our members and both have been just that great feeling of people coming away and saying, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I wanna watch this. And that's the goal, like to be complimentary and be contextual and be investigative of the genre that we all love. I mean, Queer for Fear is so special. I mean, it it really is a one of a kind piece and 101 rules. And being a part of 101 is really fun because then you get to just like really, say like what you think needs to be there and (laughs) you know i i'm so rarely interested in being like on camera for those types of docs you know i I don't Mm -hmm. you know unless it's terrifically urgent but with 101 i was like i need to be on it because i need to talk about lake mungo (laughs) (laughs) and i need to talk about inside and i need these to be represented on a modern countdown show to say no these are the new classics you know lake mungo to me is one of the great horror films of all time and it's let's cement that in in whatever way in whatever space that shutter is allowed to cement it let's cement it inside is a film that <laughs> uh i was recommended and i watched and i go wow mm. it was good though it, but it is my favorite horror movie from 2000 to 2010 Whew. Uh, another great thing that I do, um, I love about Shudder, which was, I will have to, yeah, I'm a shill for Shudder, but I, I will have to say, I loved um, Brooklyn Horror Fest and some of the stuff yeah. that you all presented and just uh, the, you know, interaction with the fans. So what I'd like to know is from Brooklyn Horror Fest, what did you enjoy the most? Um, at any festival thing I enjoy the most is a seeing things that have not been on my radar. Um, okay. That's all like mother. There's a film called mother superior at Brooklyn horror fest, which I really, really liked. Um, and that it just not come across me at all. So I was so thrilled to sit down, check it out and just see a movie. It, retrospective screenings are always a thing I love the most too. I mean, the fact that they were doing a full Fulci retrospective and Fulci is, one of my favorite filmmakers, they played some of his stranger stuff too, things like Manhattan Baby, um, which we just put on Shutter, along with like Enigma and Demonia, which are later Fulci and can be disparaged, but I think Enigma is really special. So um, it, it's always the joy of getting to see that stuff on the big screen rules, but then also just like sitting down and talking to people. I mean, that's the best thing about any festival is getting to see movies together and then talking about them and and hearing opinions that you agree with disagree with uh make new friends with I mean it's it's rad and Brooklyn Horror has great programming I mean they did a ton of new films they did a Fulci retrospective and they did a new French extremity which it was like it was like a festival made for me this year (laughs) (laughs) it was I I had a lot of fun there were some films I was not expecting and then there were films that I I mean as soon as I saw I will be honest VHS 99 I go I need to see that on the big screen I yeah. I was like that 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 sold me and then there were just other things that just kind of just wowed me while I was there uh when it comes to also horror or just kind of picking when you want to um 
or at least the categories that are on Shutter. One of my favorite sure. things, again, we're a queer podcast, but 24 seven, you still have that section. Whereas yeah. you know, oh, you yeah. know, some companies will drop us as soon as, you know, you know, <laughs> first of the next month. Ends. June. Oh yeah. yeah. June ends. No, I mean, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> the genre exists. The section of the genre exists. The filmmakers within the genre exists. I mean, no, that collection, I mean, no, I think there are things we do seasonally, but to me, that's more about opportunity of what can come to Shudder. Mm -hmm. um, as long as there are queer horror films on Shudder, the collection stays up. Nice. Uh, and what are some of your favorite, I guess, um, subgenres of horror? Oh, man. Um, I'm, a, I love folk horror. Um, it's been really really cool to me that it's become something of a household name you know mm -hmm. i think with movies like the witch and midsummer um yeah. it, it's kind of wild that you know people who aren't who don't deep dive into the genre know the term folk horror i mean i'm sure a lot of those people know the wicker man that's a classic but oh, just yeah. the term folk horror just being out in the world as a thing people talk about is really cool and really exciting and opens up so much more, so many more avenues to recommendation, which is I really love. I mean, you know, Severn Films put out that tremendous box set uh, that mm -hmm. accompanied the folk horror doc, which we have on Shutter. we have Woodland's Dark Days Bewitched, as well as a lot of films from that set. And one of those films, Eyes of Fire, I, I don't know that without this popular popularization of folk horror there would have been the avenue to go find it um i really love that movie i'd seen it years ago uh, i think at a screening or off of like a vhs rip um and it's it was one of the movies i'd hoped the most would come to blu-ray would come would be, i'd be able to bring to shutter in a newly restored format so having that on shutter now i'm really grateful um that's to me one of the great american folk horror films i hope people discover it watch it it's such a weird strange period piece about early settlers and um it's creepy and funny and I, I love it so much so I'm really glad it's on Shutter. So folk horror to me is going to check that one out. I've never I've not seen that. So it, it rules. It's about um like a small I don't know if they're a colony, but a settlement essentially mm -hmm. in, in you know on the on the US soil but pre-US and there's like a, a settlement and a guy who's clearly like a religious charlatan mm -hmm. convincing a small section of them to go off with him. And they go further into the woods, further into woods, ultimately to a place the indigenous people won't even go um, and are sort of terrorized by these tree witch spirits. It is so cool. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in this very kooky I... movie. Um, <laughs> Okay, that sounds up my alley. I mean, I so, will watch almost anything horror, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I can't think of same. many I won't watch. Um, well, okay. I would say The Exorcist. I won't rewatch it. That that I saw it when I was six. Did so. it just like get you too badly? Like, was it too... Oh, it did. Yeah, well, oh. I shouldn't... A six-year-old shouldn't watch it. But sure. then I also had neighbors who were very religious. And so mm. they know they knew I had seen it. So they would always be like, oh, if you're bad, you're going to get possessed. I go. And it just like it was. Yeah, no. And so it just kind of holds on. And I mean, I've rewatched it once and I was like, yeah, no, that still brings back the vibes. I'm good. I'll. I'll see. <laughs> it's a great film. I, I mean, it is incredible. But it's just like a film like I don't need. To, it's not like a, a you know, um a re weekly or monthly rewatch because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will say again, you know, I have seen Deadstream way too many times. Um, I'm excited that Resurrection is coming. Yeah. That, for the folks who, when that lands, uh, I didn't breathe. I felt like that entire movie, that the intensity. So that it's just, uh, again, it's another one that like, when it comes to Shudder, I'm just like, I love that you have these very like, just this wide um, variety of things for folks to watch. And yeah. that one though, that like, I was, I felt like I was just, oh, my levels of anxiety, that film. It's a really heavy movie. It's a, it's a very like paranoid film. Yeah. Um, and a film that takes you to a place for anyone who hasn't seen it. I'm really excited for you to see it. 
is just going down a road that is is going to mess you up in a very <laughs> unexpected way. Um, and if you are a fan of Andrzej Zalowski, like I, he's one of my favorite directors. This poster right here is for The Devil, um, his 1972 film. And, and I know a lot of people know and love Possession. Resurrection sort of starts off one way, but to me, like really takes you to a Zalowski sort of territory, which is really cool. It's, uh, and it's sold too. Also, um, Rebecca Hall's performance, like she's a yeah. one woman show. Like, oh. I think she's like the best actor alive. <laughs> I mean, that was next level watching that. So I'm I'm excited for folks to experience that. And you guys, I also have to commend you on your just your original series as well. I was very happy when you guys had Slasher. Um, yeah, oh yeah. Come to, uh, or Flesh and Blood. Yeah. And um, I can't wait for season five. It's very cool. That's all I can say. It's very cool. I tried. I, I'm really. I cannot wait. Like oh, that last. I think one. it's the best. I think it's the best season. Oh man, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I have to ask then too. Just in in terms of your horror tastes, though, uh, are you a person who enjoys just lots of practical effects, lots of gore, more psychological? Just kind of curious. I... I generally, I really, I don't mean this as a cop out, <laughs> what I, <laughs> but what I enjoy is the individual aspects of each subgenre deployed sharply and correctly. So, okay, you know, like I, I, of course, I think you meet a lot of people in the world who might say, like, I love this thing, but I don't love gore, or I love gore, but I don't like this. What's more important to me is to feel really deeply affected by the film and by the perspective of the filmmaker. So I think, you know, we released The Sadness earlier this year, for instance, which Ooh, really <laughs> took me by storm. And what I've said to, to a lot of people about it is there are elements of this movie you've seen before mm -hmm. in terms of uh, how splatter heavy it is, in terms of how gory it is, in terms of how far it's willing to go, you know, because it, it's so clearly influenced by like category three Hong Kong horror and things like that. But you haven't seen something like it in a long time if you're familiar with it. And the filmmaking is so terrific that it still hits, mm -hmm. you know, because I think you and I, a lot of horror fans watching this, we've all seen films with that level of gore, but not that level of impact. So that's the thing that matters to me. Like if, if you want to make a, like a really gnarly gory film like hell yeah like let's go for it i'm not that doesn't turn me off at all i'm down what i also want is the impact of the filmmaking to sell it so that i'm not just like like watching another head explode but not feeling how rad it is or how gory it is or how ghastly it is all at once i mean so and to me like oh, another subgenre i love is that era of the sort of post new French extremity, French horror wave, you know, things like Inside, things like Calvair, um, things like Frontiers that really take you by storm. So, I mean, hell yeah, I love gore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also love really like psychologically heavy things, you know, Resurrection is in a world to me of, you know, very like paranoid dread heavy movies like mm -hmm. Rosemary's Baby, of course. Um, Let's Scare Jessica to Death is one of my favorite movies in the world. Um, the the what I love about the Fulci movies a little bit more than sort of how goopy they are is the sort of dreamy haze. So anytime that can seep into a movie really excites me. Um, mm -hmm. And and Let's Scare Jessica does, does that as well. So does a movie called The Child that I really love from like 1977, which almost feels like Let's Scare Jessica to Death and a Fulci movie, like this yeah. sort of psychological haze I'm alone in the countryside there's a lot of fog there might be a creature but mostly I'm just worried and paranoid um I think those are the things that really get me um but I think what working at Shutter for as long as I have has really done is opened me up further because as much as certain things are to my taste I also have to think a lot about 
things that traditionally weren't a part, part to my taste, mm -hmm. but are to someone who might subscribe to Shudder, someone who loves that particular genre. I think for a long time, I was really zombied out. Um, and I wasn't a big zombie person to begin with. And there have been a lot of movies over the last couple of years that kind of turned me around in a way to be just more appreciative of things that might open my mind up or excite me. We released a movie earlier this year called Virus 32 that I love. And mm. I hope more people discover it. <laughs> um, it's a South American film, but that's another one where what I love so much about it is how it's directed. Cause so much of it is in these very long takes that really amp up your suspense mm -hmm. while, while this young woman and her daughter are sort of taking on these like infected or undead, however you want to describe them. So again, I hope it's not a cop out, <laughs> but really where I like come from is, well, how are you presenting this type of horror to me? Cause that's, what's going to matter the most. No, I, look, I, I, I will obviously, yes, I am a gore hound, but I just love horror just because yeah. um, I think horror is the best genre that can really um, just take you to a different realm in terms of it can explore deep topics without kind of either beating you over the head and just kind of making it either enjoyable to help you like go through the movie um totally. or help you kind of cope like there's just so much that i think the horror genre can do um and so that's why i'm a huge fan and one of the things that i will say i do love about um shutter well any streaming service but specifically shutter is how many though there are these random films I've never uh -huh. heard of. It will uh -huh. pop up on your featured. I'm like, all right, like I'm just gonna hit play. Tell me, tell me like what? I honestly, I, I don't, I can't remember if it's still on there, but it popped up and it looked I'm like, what is Fender Bender? Go, all right, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll sit and watch this. And I was like, I can't believe I've never seen this because this was fun. I, I was like, the, I, I love that type of stuff. And it was just so random. I was like, I can't believe I've I've never seen that. And I was like, oh, I love that okay. stuff. I I mean, that's what I hope we're for too. Like you should you should come because VHS 99 is so anticipated and a lot of people are gonna watch it and love it, but there's gonna be a lot of stuff you might discover. We put on a movie called Soul Survivor a few weeks ago um, from the mid eighties that is directed by the director of Night of the Comet, but is like so much less well known. Um, it's so good. I'm so excited for you to see it. It's, I'm gonna watch that tonight, actually. <laughs> please. It and it has this like heavy dread. It's um, and a lot of people say this. It feels like this interesting precursor to Final Destination and to It Follows in a strange way. Ooh. So you'll get this sense while you're watching it that I I I could never say those movies pulled from it, but maybe they were influenced by it in some mm -hmm. way. Um, but it's it's just moody as hell and i love it. it it's a great watch i'm uh, that's i'm sold honestly and then of course uh bringing back uh joe bob but also i love now um i know you know we're we're also social media heavy but i mm -hmm. love the fact that sometimes i can go on twitter and the top trending topic <laughs> is joe bob or um it's great I think when the Elvira special, I go, that's yes. just amazing. And last year, Hale Ratma was a Twitter sensation. It's a fun thing for all of us to like rally around and like feel communal, especially these last couple of years where we're like, you know, home. I mean, <laughs> so many of us were home for such like a, like a bleak amount of time and doing things, you know, watching Joe Bob together, watching Elvira, even earlier this month when we did the the secret screening on Shutter TV, I mean, just seeing people like come together and be like, what's it gonna be? Oh shit, it's the Argento movie. We're all gonna yeah. watch a new Argento movie together. Totally. Like, it rules. It's you guys fun. caught me off. I'd already <laughs> seen it, but I was like, oh damn. And then just seeing everybody's response too. They were freaking, I was like, I love that. I mean- That's the thing. Oh, I had seen it probably, you know, three or four times by then, just from when we had seen it, when we had bought it, all that kind of stuff. But then my night just turned into like watching other people watch it and discover it, which is such a great feeling. I mean, that's the kind of feeling I I enter Shudder with. How how can I, you know, help transmit some discovery, some measure of excitement, some measure of joy, and, you know, watch people just being like, a new Argenta? Let's go. It was great. I, I, I really did enjoy that. And I think, you know, the other things that um, 
as I had mentioned, though, that's my favorite also thing, though, is just going on Shutter and just, again, being surprised. And so yeah. I know there are, you know, there's some more films that are eventually coming out, but oh, well, no, I don't know. You can't say what hasn't been announced. Um, <laughs> well, that's a difficult question because I've seen some screeners. Well, like, well, maybe I can, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff throughout the rest of the year that we could probably speak about. Um, which I'm really excited about. You know, we've announced Satan Slaves Communion, which is the new Satan Slaves film, um, which is soon. I mean, it's only the first week in November. Um, and that's what I'm really excited about for so many reasons. But, you know, in 2018 was when we released Satan Slaves, mm -hmm. uh, Jocko Amor's first film, which to me was just the best haunted house film. I mean, it was so scary. He's such a modern master of horror. So the the fact that we've been able to release that, work on him, work on Impedigore with Jocko, work on The Queen of Black Magic, which he wrote and Kimo Stemboel directed, um, now work on this and just continue to work with this filmmaker we admire and respect and love and then see what he's done with Satan Slaves 2, which is so big. The scale of this movie is nuts. Um, and, it's, and it's also pulling from things like Demons 2 and like, Poltergeist 3 and like high rise horror. It's scary and it's wonderful. And it's, I, I'm really excited for everyone to see that. Um, Mandrake is really cool, which is coming in November. And that's a really nice film because I always think a lot about what November needs on Shudder. You mm -hmm. know, we're all, we're all going to have a bit of a Halloween hangover. So what is the tone that might be interesting? You, you're probably really stuffing yourself with classics with with explicitly scary films with mm -hmm. you know things of a of a feeling of like October so Mandrake has this cool like almost crime like it's like a witch movie and a crime movie like it, it it's a procedural but it's a witch movie so I think it's a nice difference of tone from oh like a lot of scary stuff a lot of like straight up like VHS and Deadstream um I'm really excited for everyone to see Blood Relatives um, I cannot wait. I saw the trailer and I was laughing. I was like, this looks incredible. And also hear me Mand <laughs> Mandrake, though, I will say I'm a procedural, like I, I, I watch way too much Law and Order. So when I saw that <laughs> pop in, my uh, screeners here, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. It's really cool. Um, it's very moody and, and you know, Irish and just this great sort of like rural feel. Um, Blood, blood relatives for everyone listening, hear me out, because this is your family movie for November. We're releasing it Thanksgiving week. It is a, <laughs> it is a father daughter vampire road trip. It is very sweet and it is very earnest and it is very funny. Um, I love it with all my heart. Um, and I'm just, you know, listen, Thanksgiving, that's it, it's it's the shutter movie you can put on with the fam. Okay. All right. I, I mean, I, I'm excited. The trailer sold me. I mean, uh, <laughs> the one thing that's, again, uh, that makes me think about some of the other releases that you've had previously that I, you know, um, the Adams Family, when it came to Hellbender oh, yeah. came out, I'm like, who are these people? And mm -hmm. then going, you know, having to go back and just get to um, find out more of their work. Like Hellbender was phenomenal and it was great to see that. So I'm excited more for, again, all these other films. But because Halloween is coming up, I'm just curious what's on your Halloween playlist. Oh, man. Um, my wife has never seen Tales from the Hood. So I'm very intent <laughs> on putting that on this week. <laughs> I love that movie. I love that movie so much. I watched it so much as a kid. Um, so that's the one I've been thinking about a lot lately. It's like, oh, one night this week, we're definitely going to watch Tales from the Hood. Um, since it's the anniversary, I'll definitely be watching Halloween 3. It's my favorite Halloween movie. Um, uh, I know the oh. tide has turned on it. I'm a little bit worried that soon it'll become cool to dislike it again. Um, however, <laughs> I will always stand by my position that Halloween 3 is incredible and a wonderful, strange film. Um, I have I have the masks right here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Um, and then I just, you know, something I always return to is like the the Corman, Poe, Vincent Price films. I think 
if it's Halloween weekend and it's sort of a chilly October, I want to watch Tomb of Legia and House of Usher um, and Mask of the Red Death. Um, those are things I kind of immediately gravitate toward. Okay. Um, There's also a new Arrow box set of like Italian Gothic horror, and I don't know the films exactly, but I'm ooh. definitely going to dive into that. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. All, that's another thing. I I love that you all are also doing physical releases eventually yeah. of certain um, either movies or even, yeah, Slasher um, Absolutely. was put out. And I think that's great because that's another way, because while I do love Shutter, I sometimes love having physical media because, you know, it's a clutter back here, but, and everywhere else, but I, I truly, as I say that, but, and I also got season four, um, top four Dragula folks right there. <laughs> um, but I really, I, I love that you also provide that. And then we also get extra goodies with that. Yeah, it's important. Um, you know, for as long as we can, we'll do that. We know the life of a horror film is beyond just streaming, especially when you love it, especially when you want to own it. I mean, I'm sure folks home could see like a little glimpse of it here, but it extends over here. There's so much I love, especially the things I own and and how that extends to even, you know, international, right? You know, before, mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned Arrow, before Arrow was able to secure it for the US, like I of course had a region free Blu-ray player and was buying that Ring box set because Ring and Ring 2 are, you know, monumental to me. Um, so I, I completely agree. I think owning, it's really nice. It's really nice when you can, especially a movie you own, especially, you know, there are a lot, there are so many great releases by companies we work with that, mm -hmm. whether it's Arrow or Severin or Dark Force or Vinegar Syndrome, and they're doing such incredible work and we get to work with them and bring some of those movies to Shudder. And if you love that movie, you can go buy it. But also, if you've never seen it, sometimes those Blu-rays are kind of pricey, you know, like you should be able to check it out first. No, uh, you know, that's <laughs> look, I I think uh, Shudder is a great price point, in my opinion, for everything that you get. You're consistently bringing in the newest of the new at times. You're creating original content. But again, you're also bringing content, maybe even myself, who sometimes I think I've seen quite a bit. Oh my I can't believe I missed this back from when I was growing up. Now, I, I, I think that's one of, you know. And, and all really that great. is, is a cycle too, because I can almost guarantee you a few months before I had that experience. And then now that's why that movie's on Shutter because I want to pass it on, right? Like <laughs> I do the same thing of like, what is this to me? I watched a movie a few weeks ago called Mermaid Legend that absolutely blew my mind. This revenge film from Japan from 1984. Um, the I'm last 20 it's amazing the last 20 30 minutes of this movie are the most spectacular sequence of revenge violence i've seen in a long time maybe ever um and it's by the filmmaker who then did evil dead trap and evil dead trap 2 so he made this a few years before um okay it, it's, it's hard to find but it's so great and that's the best feeling so i mean i don't know when i could bring it to shutter but hopefully one day <laughs> I'm still gonna have to look that up. I've, I think again, absolutely. You do, sounds... I promise it will. It <laughs> rules. I can't again. Um, well, actually, here's what I'll end on. Well, two things. One, what is a recent um, in the past? You know, 365 days. I'll have to ask. What has been your favorite horror moment? Whether it be uh, pop culture, a, a film, a show. What has just been something that um, was exciting to see happen within the horror genre? Oh, man. Um, I really, I right now, I really, really have to give it up to Terrifier 2. It's the work that they did getting that film out there, the massive success it's having. That film is nuts. That film is, a, a, a it's a two and a half hour, intensely gory slasher. I mean, it, it, I, it's the, we can all view that as just like the biggest win. So, I mean, I'm, that to me is really special. The fact that it keeps succeeding itself at the box office is also, you know, independent horror has been my favorite thing. Like just seeing yeah. it finally get more, well, it's always been there, but to be pushed to bigger platforms. And I do agree totally. that Terrifier 2, I mean, seeing it 
way too many times, but um, <laughs> I am There's... so happy that they've been able to, uh, on this minuscule crowdfunded budget, put on this massive production and to be able to put it out there on the big screen. It's, and it's, and this sort of ties into another thing that I think is overall one of my favorite things recently about horror is the way the modes of distribution work that I think a lot of people thought we would all be seeing the same type of thing, but mm -hmm. actually we're seeing everyone make very specific work, reach bigger audiences. So to me, it's a return to like regional horror in a really cool way. Like Terrifier and, and you know, Damien's from Staten Island and, and it's a very like DIY New York production. Um, Hel Adam's family who made Hellbender based in upstate New York, doing things by themselves. Uh, Jordan Graham who made Sador, I love Sador. He's uh, in California, not in the sphere of influence of Hollywood, did everything by himself. Um, I really, really respect that. And I really respect the, the movies that are coming out of that, which is, again, outside of a sphere of influence. It, it's its own thing in a really special way. There's a director named Bruce Wemple. We have his movies on Shutter. I, I'm pretty sure he's in New Hampshire, um, somewhere in New England. Again, he made a movie called Monstrous, which is a Bigfoot movie, but not quite. Like it's also a lesbian serial killer love story with Bigfoot in it. <laughs> and then he made a movie that's called going on my I don't know if I can watch all of this tonight but that's going on my list well and then he made a movie called The Retreat which is a Wendigo movie but it's also kind of like a, a psychedelic trip movie about male friendship and then also there's a Wendigo like it's <laughs> he's such an interesting filmmaker that's very doing random. I love thing. that it's so cool there's so many of these <laughs> filmmakers that their work is getting out there. Oh, and the, the Death Drop Gorgeous team just out in Providence, Rhode Island and making something specific to Providence, Rhode Island too. Mm -hmm. Like the queer scene in that city, the bars they frequent, the work that they do together. So I think Terrifier ties into that, which is just, I think we're seeing a return of like really independent, really local, really regional horror filmmaking. And now it has the mode to get out there in a way, which is rad. I love it. Um, you know, even we, we released a movie in the summer of 2020 called The Beach House, which I loved by director Jeff Brown. Um, and he made that in Cape Cod. And it feels like that sort of like a summer Cape Cod movie. Um, I, I, I love that energy. It's going to create more perspective and more diversity and more just like different types of horror. So the more we can support that is rad. I, I'm trying to think if I've seen the beach house. I feel like I have, but it's I mean, great. if it's what I'm thinking of, that was pretty. Uh, had some like gnarly or gross out stuff. There's a foot scene you might be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I've seen that. <laughs> that that made me squirm a little. That was that was really good. Uh, what I will finish up with, um, because again, I just thank you for taking the time. I'm of really course. excited. Just again, what Shutter has just for the rest of this month. Um, and I can't wait for the rest of the year. And so what I'd like to end on, because I've already, I was walking through a store. I was like, my gosh, they already have Christmas stuff up. So is there any holiday horror that is coming to Shudder? A hundred percent there is. Um, there's Joe Begas's Christmas Bloody Christmas, which I promise you is going to be the Christmas horror movie. I've you missed need, that. I'm so excited. You love, <laughs> you want. It's wild. It is truly wild movie. And in addition to that, we'll have our usual collection of like just really cool old school Christmas horror, some newer contemporary stuff, um, you know, perhaps Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I'm a big initiation <laughs> fan. I'm a big Better Watch Out fan. Better um, Watch Out. Oh, my gosh. That is, that's a, that's a holiday horror that does not yeah. get enough credit for her. That's a He's good great. One. That'll always be on Shutter. I love uh, Chris who made that. So um yes oh and and for the first time Anna and the Apocalypse will be on Shutter, which I'm really happy about I've not seen that one I do remember it's it coming so good out. oh all right see I'm yeah. already planning like you've given me stuff to watch tonight <laughs> um and in the future and that's again what I love about Shutter. and again I can't wait to see more of Dragula Titans yes really it's oh, it's just getting started so. I cannot wait also for slasher season five and then just 
for everybody's reaction to resurrection. That's what I want to yes. see is people talking about that because I remember sitting in the theaters and everyone's everyone had a different reaction, but that ending just said ah. <laughs> caught everyone. I loved it. But yeah. um again, thank you so much. And of course. um I just hope you have the best rest of your day. You too. Thank you for having me and, and anyone who's watching and reading. And if you like Shudder, thank you. We really appreciate it. If you don't like Shudder, I don't know, tweet at me, tell me what we could do better. I mean, <laughs> do you like, do you even know horror if you don't like Shudder? I'm just saying. I, I would never be so bold. I, would just, I uh, will. No, I'm I kidding. I appreciate kidding. the suggestions, the recommendations, <laughs> and how people respond to it. We're all just, you know, we're grateful. We're grateful for this time of year and for all the kind words and uh, we're just going to keep doing that work and bringing cool stuff to the service. The horror community, it may be so large, but it feels like a small, tight family, though. It's, yeah. And that's the great thing about horror. So, but with that, um, to the listeners and watchers, till next time, thank you. Thank you. You have been listening to the Horror Hour. See you next time.